this E3 coverage is starting to drive me insane, so if you want to support my impending medical bills, consider using the link below to register, download, and play Neverwinter. Neverwinter is a free-to-play MMO with a focus on engaging combat in the D&D universe. Every full referral directly benefits my channel, and it's at no cost to you. Try out Neverwinter for free today. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Patty Jack, and this is Gore Script. It just came out on Steam. It's kind of a... well, it's, it's not a roguelite. That's interesting. Usually when I see games that are first-person, are classic style, and have, I guess, voxel graphics, 99% of the time they're a roguelite. This one, though, no. It's, it's handcrafted levels in a very classical style, maze-like, FPS, bullet hell sense. And it's alright. It's, it's, it's a pretty good time to just play a game to relax and not take too seriously. So this was the one that I decided to try out to do that. I've been covering E3 stuff very heavily over the last few days. You may have noticed it. There's been a ton of video spam. I've been excited. There's been a lot of games that have been talked about. Trailers released, gameplay, all this stuff that I found really interesting. During that time, I've gotten a lot of codes, as I normally do for many indie titles and other stuff like that, so I decided it's time to take a break and cover at least one of them while I kind of get my ducks back in a row for some more E3 stuff that I might have missed. I feel like I need to do another Creation Club video. I feel like I'm not done with that topic yet, so that's going to be a fun thing coming up. I'm, I'm excited to sift through the thousands of ridiculous comments on that one. That's not true. I get like maybe 30 comments on a video if it's popular and I'm lucky, but you never know. That second Creation Club video could be the one. Nonetheless, so Gore Script is... it's an interesting little game. I did a bit of research on it and I guess it was first available on the Chrome Web Store as kind of a little indie project. And for the most part, it does its job very well. It's not going to wow you in any sense, and I do have a few issues with it, but I will say that if you're looking for just a quick little game to kind of play when you got like an hour or two, or you enjoy games that have a bit of problem solving along with FPS mechanics, this might be something you're interested in, because it has a nice little shooting mechanic to it. The controls feel nice. I had to edit the mouse input a little bit. For some reason, even though it was on raw input, it felt like there was a lot more smoothing than if I turned raw input off. I don't know what that was all about, but I fixed it and it seems to work fine. And the game itself is harmless in its intent, it's harmless in its gameplay. The problem is, the gameplay itself has a few little quirks that I'm not super... Uh, that I don't like, that I, I, it's got problems to it. The biggest and most glaring problem that you've been seeing here is that outside of the one shotgun I've unlocked so far, and I've been through at least the first three to four levels in the game, outside of that you only really get this mallet, that hammer style weapon, and a shield. The shield I learned how to use later on, you can block the things like the weird red Pac-Man guys and then kind of hit them, but aside from that, it's very hard to use it, and it's very difficult to actually judge the range that you need to be in to hit things. A lot of the time you'll be like, oh, well, I should be hitting that, when rea in reality you're not at all. And that's kind of annoying. The gun itself, the shotgun style thing, it works, but there's a lack of projectile when you're using it. You only get feedback when it hits something which I understand is kind of like an old-school version of doing things, and a lot of the time in video games when they have, like, mini guns or something, instead of animating every bullet, they'll just animate where they're hitting. The problem with a shotgun doing that is it doesn't really make it feel as impactful, and you don't know what the spread on your gun is. And this gun does have spread to it, like you can kill multiple enemies at the same time, and if you don't know where your spread goes when you fire it, that can be a bit infuriating. Other infuriating things in this game that I've noticed so far, not so much infuriating. Like I said, this game is harmless. It's not bad by any means, but it's definitely been made by someone who's still learning to create games, who's still kind of honing their craft, and that's totally fine. That's allowed. That's A-OK -okay with me. But there, 
there there could be a few changes to it. Things like the pickup systems in the game, like not being able to jump unless you have a power up. To me, that just makes the parts of the game where you don't have the power up less enjoyable. Like in, in my mind, when you get upgrades or different gear and stuff, they should fundamentally change how you play the game, but they shouldn't give you very basic things that we've already seen in video games. Things like being able to jump up and down, because obviously when you're in an FPS, that's one of the things that you're immediately going to attempt to do whenever you're, say, dodging projectiles or other stuff like that. So when you can't do it and you have to rely on, oh, I have to go and get this power up to do this thing I can do in most other games willy-nilly, it's not really a power up. It, ma it makes you feel less powerful when you're just playing without it. So that that's a very easy fix, and it can be done with tweaking. It could be a stylistic choice, but at the same time, I just don't agree with that, and I think that it could be definitely edited to, you know, ha have some more interesting power-ups in the game. What you just saw right there, too, I missed something that I could have picked up because I couldn't jump and I couldn't get back onto that ledge. That's kind of annoying to me. You know, I feel like... It makes the maze design a little bit too unforgiving. I don't know, yeah, it's... Th there's little things in this game that need to be tweaked. The developer was calling it 2.5D. I don't necessarily agree with that. I didn't know what that was right there. I guess it was like destroyed remnants of those weird triangle things. The Cool Ranch Doritos, I'm going to call them. Yeah, the developer called it 2.5D. I don't think I would call this game 2.5D because it's obviously 3D. I've never heard 2.5D used in this context before. Usually that's been a thing used for like those 3D but still 2D style platformers. Whereas this one is quite blatantly in 3D. Like it, it uses voxels. Voxels are squares and squares are three dimensional. That's the whole point of them. Sorry, not squares, cubes. Look at me messing that up. Cubes are three-dimensional, that's the whole point of them being cubes, so I don't know if that's really a thing, but that's very nitpicky. Yeah, there's a leaderboard system in this game, of course I'm not incredible at games like this, but I, I can do my own fair share. I was playing on normal mode, I tried on the hardest mode as well, that's kind of insane. I would recommend doing maybe normal or just higher than that your first couple runs, because the masochist mode is kind of ridiculous. The game looks alright. It's not impressive, but it gets the job done. You know, the aesthetic is concurrent. It flows throughout the entire thing. The Some of the models look a lot more detailed than some of the other stuff, like the doors in particular. They don't look extremely detailed, but I can kind of look past it because it's a very simple art style, and I'm never, I'm never wondering what things are. <laughs> you know, it's very obvious which um, keys I've picked up, which doors I'm going to, the levels, like I said, they're handcrafted, so that's good, because in a lot of these roguelike games, you know, they might offer a lot more variation in the levels, but the level designs them th themselves, it's never going to be as good if it's made by an algorithm as if it's designed by a normal person, so I do appreciate that, and I feel like a lot of time did go into making these levels, so that's totally fine by me. Yeah, as a game... Gore script is okay. It's it's not going to wow anyone, but I think if you got it for the right price and you enjoyed games that you just got to run around and shoot things with in kind of an old school style, or if you like the voxel style, it's a little bit outdone in my book, but you know, what isn't outdone these days, I guess. Yeah, I would say just fix the feedback on the guns and on the hammer because that's th those are the two most annoying things to me. But it doesn't break the game. It still works totally fine. Yeah. This game's getting a thumb up. One thumb up out of two. Could go up to one and a half if they fix some of those little things. But that, that's not bad. My review score system isn't bad. I didn't give it seven out of ten worst game ever. So, yeah. Just be happy about that, everyone. God. <laughs> All right. I am Patty Jack. I'll see you next time. Let me know what you think about this game in the comments or on Twitter or my Discord server. I'm always usually over there, at least part of the day, most days. And, uh, yeah. If you want to support my channel, you can always download Neverwinter using the link below. I would really appreciate that as well. Register, download, and play it. I am Patty Jack, and I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. I'm